Hello people, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm gonna go back to the mural exercise where I'm gonna show you how to run a design sprint remotely, particularly in how to ask the experts or run an expert interview. If you're familiar with, with the experts interview, typically you would have experts, senior stakeholders, CEOs, C-suite executives, or just senior managers who are not necessarily involved in the full five-day sprint or the four-day sprint, but they want to come in, give their thoughts. And these are the guys that the sprint team would typically want to get some buy-in from. Um, so I'm going to show you how we do that in our virtual whiteboard. In this case, we're going to use Miro. Uh, you can use this with Miro and all of the other uh, options out there, but in our case, we'll use Miro just to show you how. Um, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so. I really appreciate it. Or share it with your friends, family, colleagues who would find it beneficial as well. So the experts interview. Generally, what we want to do is prepare some conversation starters. So I'll zoom in into my mural here. The reason why we want to have conversation starters is because generally people don't know where to start. Or experts, when you invite them into the meeting, in this situation, like a Zoom or a Google Meet or a Microsoft Teams or whatever it is, they won't really know where to start. So I just wanted to get to give them an, an introduction to the session. Before doing that, I would take them through um, what we've done so far or what the team has done so far. So we've done a video about this, by the way, Preflight Artifacts. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look at it. Uh, so I'll take them through some of the things that we've done. We've written some challenges to find a proto persona. I remember Rebecca, who was uh, the budding fashion and lifestyle designer. Uh, she is the person that we're focusing on. And here's some of uh, Rebecca's most desired needs um, and uh, here's a user experience map that we've done as well as a team we've defined some goals and questions um, I can even take through stakeholders um, the process of how we got to this finalized goal well not finalized but where we got to really I can show them that you know we do a, a very democratic version of a voting session so I could show them you know votes like this and the questions, this was the result, and that's how we got here. During the goal voting session, that was the result, and that's how we got here. So it's important to take them through the journey so far, and therefore, it is important for us to ask them as well for their opinions on what they think about this, um, and give us some feedback, or even question our goal, question our questions, question where we're heading here. Because as the stakeholder, usually they would have a stake, obviously, in the and the product or the company that they wanted to be heard. And it's important to get their buy-in. And that's why we want to get them involved in this session. Um, remotely, what you wanna do is just quickly share the visitor link. In Mural, we'd go to the visitor link tab, copy it, and then I'd just share it in the Zoom chat. And therefore, the stakeholders could go into it, open it, they don't need to sign up on anything. They can just view it. They can view it in their own self pace as well. Um, so what I'd like to do is, you know what, take your time, uh, how about we time five minutes or 10 minutes and then I'll start the timer and then after that, just let them browse around. So they'll browse around like this and uh, they'll just re read things slowly. Um, at this point, hold off on asking any questions as they go. All you want to do is just observe the things that are done so far and then we'll get to the experts interview where they get to ask questions or even challenge the idea. Um, so I'll just end the timer there. I'll pretend like the experts has gone through all of this stuff and it is time for them to question us or for us to ask them for feedback. So back to the conversation starters. What I like to do is prepare some questions or just some triggers for them to start talking. Because oftentimes, like I said, they won't really say anything. Um, and what you want to do is just prompt them with one of these questions. So in here, I've got a list. You can have a look at them. Um, the first one is describe what the product is. So once you start asking, say, that marketing manager, hey, um, Dom, let's say if this was a, a successful product, could you describe what the product is? And then let them talk. <clears throat> 
techniques. Um, and there's a couple of other ways of doing this as well. Uh, asking questions like, what is the product supposed to do? Who would you like to use a product? And then sometimes there are periods where everyone starts to uh, stay quiet and don't know what else to talk about. If they haven't covered some of these, like for example, what problem is the product is trying to solve? You can ask questions like that. And from there, you'll gather a lot of in information from the stakeholders. Now, during the session, it is very important to take notes. So as a sprint team member, what you want to do is not really challenging them. So let's say they say, this idea is just not great. I don't think this is going anywhere. Uh, as a team member, you're not really going to challenge that, but you, you might just want to figure out further why does he think, he or she thinks that it's, um, it's not going to be successful. So while he's saying that, as a sprint team member, you want to write down the notes in the form of a how might we notes. So how might we starts with the words, how might we? And then you just fill in the black, depending on the statement that the person says. So um, how might we make this product a success story, as an example? So what you've done there is you've converted that almost negative statement or challenge into something that is solvable by using the how might we notes technique. So what I'm going to do here, just as an example, is I'll write a few more how might we notes, pretending like a stakeholder has given some comments or just said something. And as a team member, I can just double tap on Miro and I'll just write down as we go. Now, this session typically ends up being quite frantic because you're trying to listen, type notes, and uh, make sure that you're saying the right thing as well. So what we want to do is divide roles. The facilitator would be the interviewer and the rest of the other team members, let's say there's three or four of you, but the rest of the other team members would make sure that they write notes and try to fill each other, uh, each other up. Um, so I'm just gonna write a few notes and I'll get back to you real quick. Okay. All right guys, so here we've got a few notes now. In a real exercise, you'd have way more than this, but I've just written nine for examples. Uh, I'll, I'm just gonna read through some of them real quick. How might we make this a, this product a success story? How might we achieve this without an agency's help? How might we integrate our current systems? How might we launch effectively in the first phase? They're all very reasonable type of questions. Oftentimes what happens are, um, what happens is the stakeholders would come up with things that the team members, the sprint team members, hasn't really thought about during the process so far. And that's why this process is valuable because you're being very open and transparent about what you've done so far. And you're being very open-minded as well with feedback and trying to be a great listener. Um, so what you've done here is you've gathered the thoughts from your stakeholders, the people who are actually very, um, very concerned about you running this project or some of the people who are very excited about you running this project or uh, needs to get a bit more understanding on why you're running this project this process is very helpful because it makes them feel like they're involved although they don't have time to be part of your core team for the rest of the other four or five days um, so once you've done this you, what you want to do as a facilitator is thank them they can leave the zoom room um, and the core team members could stay around, hang around, and do another voting session or affinity mapping first, as a matter of fact. You want to group some of these um, cards into, uh, into the same theme. Now, uh, let's have a look at this. So a success story, how might we achieve? Um, so I've only got nine here, so you won't have that many varieties, but when you have, say, 20, 30, 50 different cards, there will be cards that are almost the same or exactly the same they're a duplicate or if you've got multiple team members writing notes uh, chances are two out of the three uh, team members would be writing the same thing because they heard the same feedback uh, so what you want to do is just group all of those ones well pretend that's done and what you want to do as teams again run another voting session the reason why you want to do this is because you want to make sure that you're focusing on the most important how might we's uh, for you to move forward so I'm just going to say expert interview. That's what we're going to call this session. Each team member gets three, uh, depending on the scale or the size of the team members uh, as well. But for now, I'll go three times, let's say a few of us. 
votes. I'll just say there's nine votes in total. And I'll just do some quick voting. Transition, launch this. Important. How might we integrate with our current systems? That seems important to me. So I'm just browsing around, casting some votes. Achieve this without an agency's help. Okay, I'll just vote on a few. All right. So after doing this and my my votes are up, my times are up. Oh, I didn't switch in on I didn't switch on a timer, but uh, typically, yeah, you'd like to start a timer when you're doing it in a group so you don't go over time. But I'll end the voting session, and there we are. That's the voting results. That's your decision tree, and so you've got a three and a few number ones in there. And if you've seen our video on goals and questions, this is exactly the same thing as what I'm doing over there. So we've got threes and we've got a bunch of ones and a couple of zeros. There we go. So this is your how might we notes. The reason why you want to vote on this is you want to have something to focus on, not too many things to focus on. And typically, the ones that you want to vote for and the ones that you're getting your team members to vote for are the most important and immediate one to solve instead of the ones that are a little bit uh, blurry. So you want something that's realistic, important and critical enough to solve right now. Um, and later on, what you want to do is attach this to your user journey map. If you haven't seen a user journey map yet, Go and have a look at some of our other videos about user journey mapping uh, and i might do one actually on the mural down the track but for now that is how you run an expert's interview in a remote design sprint situation so the tools that you need here are definitely a video conferencing tool like a zoom google meet microsoft teams you can't really do this in slack because you need um, uh, a good level of video conferencing and of course you need like a mural or a mirror for you to run these sessions but I like about this as well by the way when you're writing notes because you're gonna do this quickly you just need to double tap real quick as a team member and you can type not ho ho but how might we and so on and so forth you just double tap double tap and it will just automatically produce these note uh, post-it notes real quick for you um, I think that's it for this video, guys. It's um, it's basically an efficient way in how to do it. I find myself, after running remote sprints, I find myself typing a lot faster, actually, than writing on post-it notes. Uh, and given that you don't have to worry about post-it cards falling over, this is actually a very good me method, I would say. Doing it virtually is actually far more efficient than doing it in the workshop room. What you're missing, though, is that human interaction. But as much as you could do it in Zoom, I think um, I think being physically present is also uh, a good value in itself. Um, but if you're limited to distance, given the current situation and circumstances, then this is a very good way of doing it. All right, guys, hope you enjoy it. Um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share it to your friends as well. All right, see ya.